again with three ohms or three vowels. You can do ohms or vowels. Okay. You can unmute if you like. Do the do them with me. So uh, let me tell, give you the overview of what we're doing here. <clears throat> so we started the Medical Sound Association about four years ago. The main I idea was to um, kind of create like a think tank to be able to actually come up with ideas on different treatment plans, but also to figure out how it all works. Right? So. Uh, the basis of what we're looking at is not just frequencies, but also combination of frequencies, uh, which would be like a, a, you can think of a cell as like a pure frequency, or a organ as a bunch of frequencies, which is a timbre. The relationship between the parts is the musical interval, but musical flow through the system is really the whole thing through each of the 11 systems. So flow without blockages is really the whole deal, right? So we work at all levels, but not just sound. You know, we, we're, we're looking at electromagnetism, infrared light, ultrasound, which is just higher frequency sound, even uh, scalar waves, right? So we look at all the different aspects as well. What we've done is we've put together a detailed list of treatment plans that we're going to be going over today. But I want to show you the intake form in case you don't know about that because it's pretty cool. Uh, you can actually enter uh, on uh, when you do a treatment, enter what you're working on, what the issues are, and what instruments you're using, and then enter before on a scale of 1 to 10 uh, how severe the issue is, and then after the treatment on a scale of 1 to 10. And we've been collating these for four years, so you can see we've got 382 entries, and we're getting 67.21 uh, reduction in symptoms percentage, which is unheard of in the medical field. All right. And what's really cool about this is you can actually go and uh, filter for anxiety. And then you see we've got 223 ent entries, and we got almost 70% reduction. Or you can filter for anxiety with frosted crystal bowls. Right? And then you see 167 entries at 66%. So you can actually look and see different issues and different instruments and see how effective they are. Not exactly perfectly scientific, but still a lot of people really, I mean, it's it's it really points to something major going on here, right? And you're welcome to use this data on your sites and stuff. But main thing is, is if you do a treatment, you know, if you can go and enter before and after, that would be really cool. It'd be nice to have 10,000 entries one day and say, look how effective this is with 10,000 people, All right? So we're doing that. The, um, the treatment plans, uh, you can find under integrative sound and we've got uh, we're looking at them based on the medical aspects the conceptual framework which is based on you know what they're already doing medically so it's this is really the most important part how we're approaching it with sound right? and then later sound treatments is way more detail as to what we're actually doing because, you know, I mean, we can get people to a place of peace, and there's, but there's a million ways you can use sound to get people to a place of peace. So the conceptual framework is really the most important. Like, you know, for depression, we're going to be looking at more activation, whereas for anxiety, we're going to be looking more at calming. So it's really, uh, really important. Uh, 
them how to prepare for a session, safety guidelines so that we can get it into hospitals and not hurt people, intake questions, detailed intake questions that you can ask, and then the actual treatments, treatments other than sound, and then the homework. We have also added a section where we're looking at different uh, research projects we could do for each issue as well. Okay, so what I've done is I've actually collated uh, the information from all the different issues, which you can see here, grief, uh, anxiety, depression, trauma, dementia, addiction, PTSD, pain, autism, cancer, anger, sleep, schizophrenia, thyroid, traumatic brain injuries, adrenals, heart conditions, blood clots, suicide, end of life. And I've collated them into the highlights, which are mostly <clears throat> the actual uh, approach. So this is what I want to go through. But the main idea is as I go through this, if you've got any ideas, let me know, and then we'll add in the ideas to the treatment plan. But again, this is kind of just the overview. If you look at the actual treatment plans, they're way more detailed. They're way more detailed. So we're really kind of just looking at the approach here. So, you know, really the way we look at it is disease is chaos. Some people talk about things going out of uh, out of pitch or out of key, that's like serious. That's like cancer. Is if a cell changes its frequency, that's a big deal. For the most part, it all starts with chaos or stress or tension or fear, right? It's like ah, or anxiety, ah, or even pain. Ah, it's all chaos, and what. And so what we're doing is replacing it with stable, consistent vibration. When the body is healthy, every single cell, every single part of the body is vibrating consistently like a vowel. And it's vibrating at its own frequency. But you can also look at it as a combination of frequencies. You can see the whole all the frequencies that make up the heart because organs are not just one frequency there's multiple frequencies in fact there's the whole organ there's the materials there's the all uh the the uh, fluids there's also at the cellular level frequency and then there's the atomic level i mean there's like tons of different frequencies so it's really a timbre it's a combination of frequencies so we can look at it at that level as opposed to just one frequency. You can also look at it as the relationship between all the parts. The musical interval relationship. What's the relationship of the heart in relation to the liver? What's the relationship of the 210 cells to each other? But ultimately, it's about flow. If you don't have smooth flow through your nervous system, you'll be shaky. If you don't have smooth flow through the circulatory system, you can have a heart attack. If you don't have smooth flow through the digestive system, all types of problems happen. And that flow is a song. So we're talking about ultimately finding the notes, which would be the cells, of the, each of the 11 medical systems and then finding the rhythm with EKG and EEG. So we actually have the song of each of the systems and then using needles with frequencies, uh, microcurrents, ultrasound, infrared, scalar waves, and running that river of flow through each one, each, each, each uh, of the 11 medical systems, right? So this would be a chaotic vibration at the frequency level. It's just, and that's what happens to cells, that they get really uh, uh, asymmetrical, whereas a healthy cell is very symmetrical. And there's uh, actually a whole research project with Gong where they show the cells actually getting more symmetrical when you actually do sound on them. Right? So from all the different things we do, we can always look at whether that issue needs activation or calming.
You know, if someone's depressed, you're going to need more activation. If someone's tired, you're going to need more activation. Although if they're really tired, I mean, like, like chronic fatigue, they can't handle activation. Also, activating is will break up stuck energy. So, you know, you think of cancer. It's like, okay, we're not going to calm the cancer. We're going to break it up, right? And then calming would be for anxiety or sensitive people, transmitting love, hospice. So whenever I, anybody says, uh, uh, and I, every week I get somebody that says, oh, I've got this issue going on. First of all, I have to look up and see what it is because there's like all these issues. I don't know what they are, right? And then I think, okay, is it going to need more calming or activation or breaking up? Actually, I got a... Uh, email just yesterday from someone that said their uh, their friend's daughter a uh, daughter who's a baby has uh, has looks like they've got a brain injury from when they were born and they said what can we do with the their this baby and I'm like I'm not gonna touch a baby with brain brain issues right they're way too fragile I have no idea I mean, if they're that sensitive and they got a brain issue, I mean, I, that's that's way too young for me to, to be doing anything with sound. Okay. So these are all the different levels of vibration that I just mentioned. So you can work at the frequency level, timbre, which would be the organs, the relationship of the parts, or the musical flow, which is rhythm and melody. You can also do energy level, though. You can work at the energy level completely. Okay. We always talk about, you know, the main thing is if you have a diagnosis, <clears throat> the actual bummer of that can kill you more than the disease or the fear around it. You really have to be careful. Right? And so if you come across anybody that's got some issue, don't go, oh, I'm so sorry. Instead, it's like my friend said, oh, it's a done deal. It'll be gone. Don't worry about it, all right? To run that energy, especially for yourself, all right? Now, when it comes to <clears throat> any issue with sound, peace is always good. With whatever you're doing, peace helps the immune system. It helps... Uh, uh, the, every organ, it's also where you're more creative, and it's also a portal to other dimensions where you're one with the universe. So peace is always good. And we can do peace a lot of ways with sound. I mean, we can use frequencies. We get the right frequency. It can be very peaceful. We can have peaceful sounds. We can have musical intervals that are harmonious, music that's flowing. We can have slow fade on a crystal bowl, slow fade that fades out. It's very peaceful as, as the bowl fades out. You can go to the home note of the key of a song. The definition of the home note of the key of the song is where you're at rest, right? where you're at peace. And I always end on the home note of the key of the song. If you have one bowl, it's always that. Or, but otherwise, you want to find the home note on your instrument. Or if you have multiple bowls, it's going to be one of the bowls. It's the one that just feels the most done. Right? And then dynamic curves. I mean, you can play different sounds, but if you actually do a curve where you get mellower and mellower and softer and softer and lower and lower frequency and slower and slower until it's really, really still. That's way better than just playing instruments. I, it leads people to that stillness. Also, having them play the instruments can make them more peaceful. Uh, also, voice work. I mean, getting anybody to make uh, any vowel is really good, right? Just even call and response is really effective. If you can get them to do chants or mantras, a whole nother level, right? But especially sounds on the body. I mean, you can put Tibetan bowls on the body, tuning forks on the body, frame drums right above the body, even a didgeridoo. Uh, you can do sound tables and sound lounges and we got the bass belt and such that you can put on the body that are really effective so then we got uh brainwave entrainment this is one of the best 
where you actually use binaural beats to entrain the person into their natural brainwave rate of delta for sleep, theta for creativity and oneness, alpha for learning, and beta for thinking and overcoming ADHD, and gamma for blissing out. And we do an assessment where we find a person's note and metabolism rhythm and brainwave rhythm, and we tune the brainwaves to them. It's really, really effective. But now, but now after you get people into peace, the next section is to really work with what were the issues behind it. So it's almost kind of like the psychotherapy section where we're looking into, you know, how could you change your lifestyle or be able to deal with the challenges that are actually causing these issues. Also, we have a whole class on holding frequency where we go through 11 techniques to be at peace in the midst of a challenge. So you can desensitize different issues. So uh, if you're doing psychotherapy, uh, what we like to do is first get people into a place of peace with sound and then go through the self-discovery and transformation section. Some people actually do sound after the talk, uh, uh, going through the questions as well and, and figuring out how to transform. But the truth is, if you can get people to a higher perspective or connect them to source, source is the best healer of all, right? So that can be really, really cool if you know how to do that. Okay? So these are the things that are common to all issues okay so let's look at different issues sleep well number one thing for sleep is brainwave entrainment uh, but you know um, brainwave entrainment tuned to you I mean if you use Delta frequencies tuned to your brain when you're asleep you're just entraining you into the actual rhythm that you're at when you're asleep and it's really effective the research is is uh, shown that it's un unbelievably effective actually but the problem is a lot of people think oh I'll just be stressed out all day and then I'll do some sound or music before I go to sleep and I'll just be fine I'll be able to sleep <laughs> if you're if you're running anxiety through the whole day it's going to be hard to get that system slowed down right you really need to do peace throughout the day. Really, you know, whether it's bowls or music or yoga or whatever. You, I mean, do it like, like 10 times, even if it's like five minutes or, or two or three minutes, or even if it's 30 seconds of just ooh, any vowel, right? I mean, that's the trick. You got to really calm your system throughout the day instead of just waiting for the night. Then there's anxiety. There's a big difference between how you treat panic attacks versus general anxiety. People with panic attacks are really fragile. A sound table or sound lounge is way too much. A crystal bowl is really normally way too much for somebody having a panic attack. You know, really the only thing is a really low frequency ooh or just love ooh. love is the antidote for panic attacks but also what I've learned about panic attacks is the person is not shut down in fact it's like they're on psychedelics their system is wide open. So you can lead them into spirit because I've been led into spirit many times because I used to have panic attacks and just ended up blissed out. So don't think somebody with panic attacks is totally shut down. They're, bla they're blasted wide open. They have no boundaries. They, right? So um, the thing, some of the things that have really helped is I've got, a CD called uh, Chakra Guided Meditation that's really helpful, really helpful. And also to walk them through each chakra one by one and have help them find the frequency of that chakra. 
Don't even have them make it out loud. You don't even have to make it out loud. Have them imagine a stable, uh, consistent frequency at each chakra. It's shockingly effective. When I learned how to do that, I got rid of my Xanax. And not only could I get rid of the panic attack, I would be blissed out by the end by the time I got to the crown. I did this with a nine-year-old with serious panic attacks just like six months ago. She came in, her mom goes, she may look calm, but she's on the edge of freaking out right now. And we just, I walked her through and had her tone silently each chakra. And it, it totally worked for her. Okay. It's worked for everybody I've actually tried it with. Okay, but general anxiety is quite different. I mean, you could totally put somebody on a sound table with general anxiety. You could have them bang a gong, right? Although gong's a little too activating. It's nice to have calmer instruments. So, you know, creating peace, brainwave entrainment, tuned to them. Sound on the body for anxiety is re and general anxiety is really good. And then you can explore the triggers. What, tri what, what, what causes the anxiety? right and how to deal with that and um, although for some people if they've got PTSD you know they might not be ready to deal with it or if they're really fragile I mean getting them in their body with sound is just really effective and that could be toning tuning forks on the body all types of things uh, holding frequency where we find all the different techniques and then then the higher perspective is you're not the anxiety you are a point of awareness watching this anxiety that point of awareness is perfectly still you're a perfect spirit that is perfectly stable your soul you are universal love you could go to those higher perspectives right for ADHD, really, we'll talk more about it, but the ADHD is really about brainwave entrainment in, in beta. All right? Tuned to the person. We'll come back to that later. Okay. Brainwave entrainment tuned to the person is the best for traumatic brain injuries. I mean, it's the very best. So to tune to a person, what we have a whole, you can find it at... Uh, yourhomenote.com but what we do is we play each of the 12 notes and rhythms and we have you tune into which one makes you the most peaceful calm and still and and uh, I've gotten really good at it but normally people know themselves uh, but we're also creating an actual EKG EEG unit that will actually do it automatically within a minute I but, and also we uh, you can actually learn how to do it and there's a uh, and actually do that as a practice we have a whole uh, kit that we offer as well okay. and then we've got CDs and Delta theta alpha and beta and gamma at every key so we got 48 CDs that uh, and so we can give Delta theta alpha and beta uh, with gamma and all of them tuned to the person. David, when you say tuned to the person, are you talking about the frequencies and tones or tuned to the the energy, the where the person is? It's really what we're talking about is the person's metabolism. We're talking about an average of the heart rate because the heart rate goes up and down when you're at peace and the brain wave rate which is a rhythm that doesn't go up and down when you're at peace so we play each of the 12 notes and rhythms and see where you're at peace and okay. that is i mean and that is really the best place to be because again it's where your organs work the best pieces the whole deal right it's where your organs work the best all your your immune systems go, uh, works the best and it's where you're you're the most creative in a portal to other dimensions right? and so what it's we're talking actual metabolism rate now if you take a rhythm or let me tell you, say it this way if you take a note 
or a frequency and you cut it in half, it's an octave lower. It's like the same note, an octave lower, like on a piano, right? If you go, keep cutting it in half and go below, below 20 hertz, it becomes a rhythm. So, two hertz, uh, so if we take 64 hertz, which is a C, and cut it in half, you got 32. Cut that in half, it's 16, and then 8, and then 4, and then 2. So, 2 hertz, 4 hertz, 8 hertz, which are all rhythms. 2 hertz is, is two, 2 beats per second. Bum, 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 right? Those are all C. So every rhythm is a C. Your heart rate is a note. Your brain wave is a note. The speed at which you walk is a note, right? It's all, it's, it's just a lower octave, below our hearing range. So depression is really, can be really effective with sound. Um, the low mood CD I've got starts like really blah. So it matches where they're at. And over 12 minutes, it gets more and more activated very slowly and brings them into an activated awake state. The main thing with depression is to slowly build into it. All right. I mean, if you play a gong, something that's really activating, you know, they're probably going to throw you out. My antidepressant CD has got a lot of activating sounds in it. And it also goes through all the, the notes. Because I think sometimes people, when they're depressed, they're stuck on a certain note. We also have a depression relief frequency CD from Peter Guy Manners. And this one, this CD actually is not music. It's frequencies. And... Uh, there's a full range of frequencies for for depression uh, depression and there's happiness there's even love in there and we also provide a tapping script you know even though I feel depressed I love myself no matter what right and so you can listen to the frequencies you don't even have to tap listen to the frequencies and read the script and it's really effective also for depression is to help them find a playlist of music and songs that help them and put together a playlist whether it's on you know <clears throat> spotify or just on itunes also getting them to actually play and move is really important and getting them to do their own voice work as well and sounds on the body oh my god sound table is like incredibly effective uh, um, and then, t really to look at their goals and purpose in life, All right? And even do a ceremony around that. And then, this is one of my favorites for everything. Imagine what it would be like if, if you didn't have that issue. Feel it completely and make the sound. Anger. They've found that actually beating a pillow and getting it out doesn't get rid of the seed of the anger. It might make you feel better in the moment, but it doesn't get to the core of it. Now, if, you're, if the person is stuck and stuffing it, that might be exactly what they need. Hit this gong, bang the gong, hit it really hard, get it out, right? Express it. But otherwise, it's not good because it just brings up that energy and it doesn't transform it. The trick is to transform it, right? Now you could do toning. You could also express the anger and slowly transform it to a stable, consistent vowel. The slower you do it, the more it will seem to be effective, right? You can also use cognitive ther therapy where the, the idea is to make it small. It's not horrible what's going on. It's not cool 
it's a little inconvenient, but it's not horrible. All right? Okay. And then self-discovery. What are the triggers? And then setting boundaries, because sometimes people just don't know how to set boundaries. And you know, sometimes people set boundaries and it feels like you've been knocked over. So we teach how to set boundaries with love. But really, the main antidote to anger is compassion. What brought them to do what they're doing? We have a whole class on compassion. Just did it, actually, yesterday. What brought them to do what they're doing? It's Say that really, question. Yeah, let me finish that sentence. It's really, it's really the um, entrainment into the craziness and selfishness of society for tens of thousands of years. It's like people are, are just entrained. It's like normal, right? If everybody was in love and light and the whole planet, we wouldn't even run that energy. But it's like it's in the ether, right? Especially compacted in the cities. Right? It's not their fault. It's really no one's fault. That's the way I do compassion. Dalai Lama says com you do compassion by seeing that they, they are the same as you. They want happiness just like you. And they don't want suffering just like you. Okay, David. Um, I've been reading a few people who have um, asserted that chronic illness can be linked to repressed emotion. And one of the one they cite often with cancer is anger. And I could see if that disruptive waveform were not released, if it were suppressed or repressed. I mean, it's there, but it's not expressed, so it's hung on to. Like, let's say there was some experience where it wasn't safe to be angry uh, and you got trained in that, you know, and, and it turns into a way of being where people are like peace at any price or perpetual, um, perpetual conflict, avoidant individuals, right? That can turn into a disease state, it seems to be. I wondered if you had any thoughts on that or if you'd ever heard that. Yeah, that's exactly what we'll go over when we go over the cancer. I think that's exactly it. I think stuffed, stuck, stuffed emotions and stuck emotions are, I mean, you know, most medical intuitives say that emotions are 80 to 100% of all disease. And generally, that means stuck emotions. Stuck emotions that are you can't express. And it's rampant, especially in other cultures. You know, it's like, don't don't be heard right and and especially for women because men have been squashing the throat chakras of women for tens of thousands of years i mean even men don't even know how to express themselves and then we it's like you know and as babies we had it down it's like okay if you have anything going on ah right we don't, we don't even worry about whether we do it right or if anybody thinks we're weird, we just let it out. And then around one or two, the disease starts. And the disease is, shh. Right? And then we get in school, and it's no more sound. And we lose that ability to express ourselves. And that's a blockage. Blockages are the number one cause of all disease. No flow. Yeah, so you're totally right on, totally right on, and it's it's really so. We'll we'll go over it in more detail when we get to the cancer here. Okay. okay, so higher perspective, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, even realizing that it's natural to be angry on this planet because of what's going on, and not to feel bad about yourself. When it comes to grief. There's three different types that are dealt uh, that we do different types of sound treatments for. If someone's just lost someone, don't try and transform it. Don't try and cheer them up. Don't go. It's okay. Don't worry. Right? Let them be, let them grieve. Let them grieve. Help them grieve. In fact, 
be in the grief with them. But this is, I had this uh, woman, I've done a lot of grief workshops with, with groups and stuff. And so my friend called me and she said, Dave, my boyfriend who I'd met, they'd been to my house, we were just in Big Sur and this big wave, uh, we were snorkeling and a big wave came and it took four days to find his body. And she came over. I said, come over, I'll help you. It was her mom and her her sister. And she she had no problem grieving. The problem was depression. She was totally depressed and could barely talk. I can't believe he's gone, right? And her, her mom and her sister were totally entrained into that depression because they thought, we'll honor where she's at, right? And it was really, so I went through all the grief aspects and then I focused on the depression. I said, okay, I don't know if this will work, but let's make the sound of no really loud and I said okay on three imagine you have a tiger tiger attacking you and that's this depression and on three we're going to do or which is always four we're going to do a really loud no right and I'm like okay she's going to do it because she's really depressed right and we get I, I do it so I demonstrate and then I said okay one two three you do it one two three and she goes no and I'm like holy crap you totally are still in your your power. You can't allow this depression anymore. And within a half hour, the veil list lifted and we were all laughing and she was back to normal. And then we looked out the window and over the Golden Gate Bridge was a double rainbow. And we, she just started bawling, and it was just so perfect. I said, grieve, 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 but don't allow yourself to get, be depressed. I, hard to say that to somebody who's been depressed for a long time, right? Because it's in their, in their chemistry, right? But for someone, I saw that she had the power to get out of it, and it worked. <laughs> I was surprised, actually. The other thing is when somebody's really not feeling. It's like, oh, I've got to go back to work. Uh, or I'm fine. I'm fine. Well, have you grieved? No, no, I'm fine. I, I don't need to. So I've actually brought people into the sadness to have them feel again. I had this one guy. He had his daughter had committed suicide and his wife had left him and he said if I start crying I don't think I'll ever stop stop and I got him on the table and I felt his grief and I was like crying and brought him into the grief and he started bawling finally I'm like yes he's feeling again when you shut your emotional body down <clears throat> You shut it, the whole thing down. Yeah. Then there's complicated grief, which is, I had this one woman, she was like, my husband died and I cry every day, sometimes three or four times a day. And I said, well, how long ago did your husband die? And she said, two years ago. I'm like, oh my God, you're a professional griever. You totally got it down, right? Does it feel good? No, okay. The antidote to grief is, first of all, it's okay, but that one only works with so much for people. But especially the main antidote for grief is gratitude. To shift it to gratitude. If it's been going on a long time, shift it to gratitude, right? That's where... That's way better for you. Thank you for the love I had. Thank you for that bright light on the timeline of my life. Right? 
also if you can teach them to bring in love universal love then there's no loss of love and a simple one is just have them send the sound of love to their own heart shows them that they've got all the love in the world when it comes to pain oh my god pain's like the lowest hanging fruit here i mean we can use diversion get them focused on something else and that works but normally the pain comes back afterwards you can also use music which will actually is kind of diversion but music actually does create dopamine and oxytocin and serotonin which can actually get rid of the pain and uh it normally doesn't it does come back but occasionally it will not come back but especially while you listen to the music at least it's gone i mean but the other big thing is just peace i mean the problem with pain is pain causes more pain when you are in pain your body tenses up and that causes more pain god kind of blew it in the pain area right it's like okay we need to know if there's something wrong but we don't need to die from the pain and there are people that are dying from the pain and it's totally debilitated right the main thing about pain is to find uh, is any sound on the body will generally help but what we're looking at is finding the frequency of all the different nerves to actually get rid of pain in detail Vibroacoustics is unbelievably helpful with, and even toning is really helpful. But vibroacoustics is sound table, sound lounge, we have sound belt, things like that. Things like that. And we've got all these different CDs you can play on the body. They're really good for pain. And sound pillow, we've got the sound belt on the right. The dolphin's really effective. Okay. Okay, PTSD. With PTSD, the first thing is to really develop a connection and trust. A lot of people don't want to talk about their PTSD and trauma. And you got to be careful because you can re-trigger it. First thing is get them to a still point with sound. Do the peace thing. And if they're shut down, one technique that's really cool is to do call and response. So they get comfortable making sound. Most people are scared to death to make sound. Do call and response. That's the best thing to get people to, to open up is make this sound. Ooh, I'm doing it with the dementia company right now. And we, um, so you get them to make sound until they're comfortable. And then you go, okay, this is how I'm feeling. Every time you see them, you, get, you, you do a sound of how you're feeling. Right? And then, how are you feeling? You want to make the sound? Oh, no, that's weird. All right? Okay, well, is it like this? Or, no, is it more like this? Uh, okay, yeah. And then you go, okay, you want to make the sound with me? And you get them to, so they can make the sound of how they're feeling. All right? And finally, you work up to making the sound of their trauma. May take a couple months. And you have to make sure they're ready for it. Right? To express it. Because they may not want to talk about it at all, but they can make the sound of it. The um, holding frequency class that I mentioned is really good for it. Right? To bring it out and express it okay. and then there's different ways you can transform it from a higher perspective there's Ed Rupert that's using my sound lounges for first responders in Colorado and he actually uh, if someone has a crisis a first responder he uh, which is normally about to commit suicide He'll take out our sound lounge to them. He's saved over 300 lives in the last five years. So much so that they're now putting my sound lounges in the, the fire stations 
for when they have some stressful situations. I just sold another one. Okay. Dementia. We have a contract with the larger dementia, largest dementia company in Northern California called Calabria in Napa, California, and they've got over 200 dementia patients. They call them participants. And we have a detailed treatment plan. First of all, finding music they love, but not just music they loved in, in earlier days, which is cool, but also sound healing music because they are not shut down either. So find music that really lights them up, right? Let's try some Tom Kenyon. Oh boy, that's a trip, right? And they're like, whoa, what's that, right? And then finding instruments they love. We've actually are testing every person with a dozen different instruments, up or down, right? And a third of them don't like the crystal bowls, too piercing. So we do sound baths without the crystal bowl. We, we create... Uh, groups of the people that don't like the crystal bowls and groups with people that do like the crystal bowls. All right? So we can do sound baths. And then you can also get them to play. I had a woman uh, just last week and I uh, put a sansula, a little kalimba in her hands, and she's like jamming on it. She's like, cool. And the staff is like freaking out. This woman hadn't responded to anything in two years. I, I had a jam session going two weeks ago with with like a dozen dozen of them. There were the the uh, uh, higher uh, functioning group, right? They were then they were all in time, perfectly in time. I had them playing drums and playing sansula, playing the free note xylophone. It was totally in time. It was so cool. And then we are doing brainwave entrainment, tuned to the person. Oh my God. It's calming them out. This, I mean, 30% of that group in the big room, they're in anxiety all the time. And it's really stressful for the staff as well. I mean, there's this one woman, she just screams, right? Who's really low functioning. And so we're finding their note and tuning it to them. It's shockingly effective. Again, you got to be really careful with frequencies on people that are really fragile. But Brent tuned to them is, is always good. Sounds on the body, we have a sound lounge there as well. Also music tuned to 40 hertz or any flashing uh, infrared light is really good for dementia. There's a, a study at MIT that showed that it's quite effective. And we're teaching them nonverbal communication. It was so cool, it was just there a few days ago and I'm like, Okay, let's do the sound of how you're feeling. And it, it, we've been there, you know, we've been there for quite a while. And for the first time, each one of them, these are the high functioning ones, each one of them did the sound of how they're feeling. And it was like, it was so cool. Because as they get into more advanced dementia, they won't have to use language. They can go, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. You can still communicate, right? It's really cool to be able to express yourself non-verbally. Okay. All of these plans are from the meetings we've had in the Medical Sound Association. Parkinson's. Parkinson's, we did clinical research with a dozen Parkinson's patients and found that the sound lounge got rid of their tremors almost every time, which meant some of them actually got off their medication and just use the sound lounge. I've tried binaural beats tuned to them, and sometimes it works. A lot of times it doesn't. I, I've actually done binaural beats tuned to the rhythm of their tre tremors, and that actually helps. So you can actually look at the rhythm of their tremors and actually play a drum or do sound to that tempo. That can be really cool. But sound lounges are really effective physically on the body. Autism is really about, you know, um, uh, it's almost the same as dementia. Find the music they love, find the instruments they love, have them play the instruments. Brainwave entrainment. Jeffrey Thompson research shows that this is super effective for autism. I've done uh, uh, brainwave entrainment for about a dozen autistic kids, and they're like all over the place. Then I hit their note, and they stop. And they're still. It's like, that's it. 
sounds on the body can be but you know autism is a big difference between <clears throat> being low on the spectrum and high on the spectrum i mean if they're really high on the spectrum they're they sometimes you can't even approach them so they can be way too sensitive to sound or you know uh, anything you do so you got to be really careful but for the most part uh when they're low on the spectrum they love sound I mean, I had a, uh, one of my students who uh, had a yoga class, and she would, would do sound with, she had a whole room full of autistic kids low on the spectrum, and she said they just loved the sound with the, that, that she would do. Again, teaching them nonverbal communication, or just responding to them nonverbally, you know, just like, you <laughs> just making a connection is the whole deal addiction we worked with a addiction center right next to our school for about three years and did a lot of workshops and brought them over put them on the sound table again gets rid of all the anxiety got them blissed out don't need drugs when you're blissed out okay uh, expressing emotion, sounds on the body, holding frequency so they can deal with, with uh, challenges. I believe the main thing about people that are addicted is they're just bored with 3D life. If you can get them connected to source, they're no longer bored. Right? and then help them create a new lifestyle and goals and even do ceremonies around that. Schizophrenia is a trip because you can do sound one day for them and get them to peace, do the same sound and they go out to another dimension or body, right? So it's really tricky. Schizophrenia, often think of as, uh, I have a few psychic friends that say it's mostly entities. And you can use sound to get rid of entities. I had this one guy in class, actually, who was really kind of amped. And finally, one day, I wouldn't normally say this, but I said, I think you might have an entity. It just seemed appropriate at the time. And he goes, oh, yeah. The general has been here for 10 years. I can't get rid of him. I'm like, okay. So we formed a circle around him and tone with the intention of getting rid of the general. And the next day he came back and it was like, Dave, the general's gone. And his energy changed drastically. You can use Christ energy as well. I command you in the name of Jesus to go now. Go. It often works. Okay. Thyroid. How come we don't have the frequency? I've got a lot of frequencies in, in my my reader, my book for thyroid and adrenals, right? But it's a little different for every person. We should, we should know the frequency of them. But for adrenals, number one is just peace and, and calm. I mean, adrenals are just you working too much, you're going too much. So getting people relaxed, and that's, you know, peace, that's easy with sound. For the thyroid, same there, but thyroid often uh, you get stuck energy there the main thing i notice is the thyroid starts buzzing and if you tone to it it will stop buzzing just a couple of things there oh or just maybe you need to express the emotions because thyroid is the throat chakra in the voice analysis program it says thyroid is too little or too much of c in your voice and adrenals is too little or too much of D sharp. Okay. Blood clots. I had blood clots, so I'm big on this. The thing with if someone's got serious blood clots, you cannot do physical sound on them. I mean, I couldn't get on the sound lounge for a year. You break a blood clot loose. I mean, you're in trouble. If it goes into the brain or the heart or anywhere, you're dead. Or lungs, normally the lungs is where it goes. 
my blood clots are mostly gone, so I do sound now. Right. So you could visualize them melting. You can do sound around them, just not sound physically on them. I mean, you can't even do do massage on blood clots if somebody's got serious blood clots. You really got to be careful. But it's really, it's kind of an activating thing. I mean, blood clots come from stagnation. So it's more about getting energy flowing. I mean, walking and hiking is the number one prescription for blood clots to get people moving, right? So any way you can do that is good. Heart conditions. Again, we got 30 page treatment plans for every one of these issues. So I'm just giving you the highlights. How come when somebody has a heart condition, they don't go, here 20 meditations on bringing love into your life. I bet 90% of all heart conditions are a lack of love, right? I mean, there's so many ways we can do love, right? I've got all types of CDs on love, but I've even got frequencies for love and, and you know, I mean, just run love, use love, have them send the sound of love to themselves and to others, right? Work with love. <laughs> Digestion is often caused by <clears throat> stress digestion problems so peace is the deal but a lot of digestion problems are caused by either um, uh, bacteria or bugs you know you could have a uh, uh, H. pylori I had H. pylori getting you peaceful is not going to get rid of H. pylori right it's really serious bacteria so ultimately we'll have frequencies for those bacteria but I found if somebody's got a serious bug you know there's other things that you sound won't do it right now what I've found but if it's just stress it totally does it of course getting you never know but serious bugs you know you never know okay Okay. And cancer. Cancer, getting them to a place of peace and into a place of empowerment, which is totally overcoming that stuckness of not expressing themselves. I mean, do the no sound. No! Right? I've done that with many people with cancer. And it's because it's really the fear that will kill them, right? And then look at stuck emotions and work with emotions to release them. Get them in their body with sound. Resonate. Imagine the frequency of those cells before they were cancer and vibrate them into that. Just do a sweep in your head and then get them into a higher energy. Number one thing that we do is on everything is imagine the issue is completely gone and feel it in your body what would it be like feel that in your body completely and then make the sound of that there's nothing better I mean the second you visualize and feel it completely gone and especially make the sound of it the whole body starts flowing your immune system goes party time right because it's like back to normal right there's nothing better than that i think okay. same with covid we, i mean ultimately we we're on the threshold of finding the frequency of cancer and covid and exploding it i'll go over that in a bit okay okay so this is, those are some of the main issues that we've covered in our meetings over the last four years. I, any thoughts or questions about them? I was um, wondering, 
What are you using for dissociation? I was wondering if the um, same uh, protocol as in depression or like with people that really need to ground, but they can't because they go into dissociation. I'm sorry, I'm not, I didn't hear the question. So you're talking about disassociation? Yeah, dissociation. Um, well, peace is really good. You know, okay, so think of it. Do we, is, is that going to need more activation or more calming? I would think calming, right? Yeah, because think, uh, uh, disassociation, grounding. I mean, if you, yeah, grounding is calming. I mean, we're not going to get them really excited, right? To, because that could like make it worse, I think. So we're talk, so peace is the deal. Peace is always good for everything, and it's really good. So <clears throat> it's interesting. You know, what I would do is I would go, okay, who are you? All right? What do you identify with? Who do you identify with? And it's like, okay, then I would go through all the different things that you could identify with that are stable, consistent vibrations. You know, I often think of myself as a point of awareness, the witness that's just watching everything. And that camera is really still. And when I identify that, I'm still. Also, I think of myself as a pure perfect spirit and that's totally stable also a soul that is totally stable and often I think I am universal love do any of those resonate with you because most people think of I am my emotions I'm up and down I'm my thoughts I'm up and down all over the place but if you identify with something that's peaceful and stable and consistent it's way better but as you said, grounding, you could totally, I mean, phys things that get them physically in their body, as we went over the sound table, the sound lounge, the Tibetan bowls, the, the frame drum on the body, tuning forks on the body, anything physically on the body could be really good. I did okay. do for that matter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good, thank you. Yeah.